My name is Andrew. I work in an awesome company called Asana, and I just wanted to kind of walk you through uh, kind of how we think about design of the Asana and kind of uh, what that what that means. Um, so first, of the question is kind of if you guys aren't familiar, what is Asana? Um, and if you kind of looked at our, our product, you'd be like, oh, you know, it's a it's a task list, right? Um, but I think we're trying to be a little bit more than that. I think it's it's a it's a group task list, and we we really want to be kind of the shared source of truth for you across your entire team. So. Um, you know, kind of all the information and the knowledge and the, you know, the plans and the ideas that you have about the work that you do. Um, we want you to kind of take those out of your head and download them into Asana so that, uh, you know, they can be shared across your entire team and, you know, everyone on your team can kind of, you know, slice them and, and look at them and comment on them and, and just kind of everyone, everyone's kind of working uh, literally from the same page. Um, so, you know, if you're a manager, you can kind of get a high level view and if you're an individual contributor, there's just kind of this uh, this source of truth that you can kind of refer to and, uh, you know, kind of plan with and, uh, and get insight into a lot of parts of the company that you wouldn't otherwise, um, you know, kind of have. And uh, so, you know, kind of what our product does, that, you know, the stuff I just described is obviously very important to the design of the product. Um, but we're also trying to do something that, that's even a, a one step higher. Um, you know, Asana wants you to, to help you do great things, right? And that's really important to us. We're trying to, you know, get people who are working in groups and accelerate them to, you know, kind of work to their, to their fullest potential. Um, and in order to do that, kind of Asana, Asana wants to make you feel empowered, wants to make you feel like you're getting things done, wants to make you feel alive. Um, so Asana really wants to push you forward, but also Asana wants to be, you know, kind of your rock, right? Uh, we want you to be very comfortable and very zen um, and very, you know, kind of in control, which are not things that, that people often feel when they're, you know, doing product management um, and kind of, you know, doing, doing time management and managing their tasks. Um, so, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of a balance between those two things. Um, so kind of through that context, you know, what, what is design? Um, and so obviously design, you know, we want to help people get things done. As I said before, like, there's a very uh, practical part of our product that is, that, you know, wants to help people accomplish something in their lives. Um, but at the same time, we, we really want, uh, you know, kind of when people are using our product, we'd love it if, like, you know, just every once in a while, like, just a little smile kind of crept over their face. Um, and they could kind of, you know, just feel a little bit better about themselves and what they're getting done and, and just feel like, oh, this is great. Like, I'm using this great product and, uh, you know, I'm really, you know, really enjoying it and I'm, I'm a much better person for having done so. Um, so we also want to help people smile. Um, and those two things, I feel like that, that is the essence of design, right? Design is helping people get things done and helping people smile. And if you can do those two things, I think you actually pretty much have a, have a great design. Um, so kind of what, what else is design, right? So obviously designers do design. Um, and we have design deliverables, and you know we make sketches, and we do wireframes, and we you know we have arguments about font sizing and, and all these things, right? This gets us up in the morning, and we love doing these things. Um, but design is also you know much more than that, right? Like so, this is all kind of how it looks, um, and kind of you know kind of how parts interact with each other. Um, but design is also really what the product is, right? You know what the product uh, wants to do, and how it's going to help people accomplish their goals. Um, so Steve Jobs is, is famously quoted as saying, you know, design is how it works, right? And so, you know, our mission is to kind of accelerate people forward and get them really uh, working on their stuff more effectively. Um, so it'd be really foolish for us to, to say like, okay, well design, you know, is, is how it looks. Um, but questions like, you know, do we want to put a button in that, that gives people a Gantt chart? Or do we want to, you know, help people uh, share their task list with their Facebook friends? Like, if we don't answer those questions, um, you know, that, that would be a little silly. So that, that's kind of design as well. Um, so then the question is kind of who does design? Um, since obviously designers do design, but also you know the, the stuff I was talking about on the last slide is very much kind of the milieu of the PM. Um, and you know at most startups, I think the CEO is wise to, to get herself involved as well. Um, but at Asana, we kind of we want everyone to do design. Um, so these are you know developers and product support and our recruiter and, and all these people. Um, in addition to you know kind of the core product team, the designers, the PM, um, people like that. So we kind of do this in in two different ways. Um, so every four months, we, we kind of schedule an entire week of you know, these company-wide roadmap meetings. Where what, we're, what we want to do is kind of plan our, our near to medium term work. And uh, so our PM will, will kind of spend a lot of time in the interim, uh, you know, going around and kind of identifying you know, really kind of lucrative feature opportunities. Um, she'll send them out, say, you know, does anyone have any comments? What else should we be working on? And then we'll kind of form into committees where we um, you know, kind of look at like, what are these features going to be? Like, how are they going to work? And, and like I said, this is the entire company. Um, you know, so on these committees, we have, you know, a cross section of developers and, and, you know, kind of typically non-product people. Um, and we kind of answer all kinds of questions uh, during these meetings. Like, you know, what, what are kind of all the possible directions we could go with this feature? How long is it going to take? Um, and then kind of, do we want to do this at all? Right? One thing I really like about Asana is that 
you know, we kind of all have this very clear vision of, of where we're going and what the product is eventually going to be. And uh, so we can kind of sit down and say, like, given this idea, is that going to get us much closer to this, given the amount of time that it's going to take us? Um, so that's, that's really valuable. And I think, you know, obviously there's, there's the planning benefit to these meetings, um, but it also just makes the entire team feel much uh, more invested in the product. So when the d developers and I, um, you know, and, and product support and all these people kind of interact with uh, developing these features later, they already feel like they've had a voice in the process. They already kind of understand, you know, like all the thinking that went into, you know, the direction that we're taking, and they're kind of able to, to uh, you know, use that to feel more invested in their uh, in the work they're doing. Um, so the other thing we do every day, um, so we live in Asana. We run our entire company in Asana, and uh, so we're really big into dog fooding our own product. And one thing that that happens, one thing we keep in Asana is our product backlog and our list of feature suggestions. Um, and so every day while people are working, you know, if they kind of come up with something like, oh, I really wish I could see, you know, X in the product, or, you know, they showed Asana to their friend, and their friend emails them and is like, hey, I really, you know, it'd be great if Asana could do, you know, Y. Um, people can and do just, you know, drop this right in the list, right? So it's very, this very open list, um, and I think something like half the company subscribes to this list. And so every time someone puts in a, um, an idea, uh, you know, an email will get sent out, and we can all kind of see it and, you know, kind of mentally process it and say, okay, you know, what, what do I think of this idea? Like, and then we'll comment back, you know, I think this is a great idea, or, you know, we thought about this and decided not to do this, or, you know, maybe this is a great idea for the, you know, distant future, but probably not right now. Um, and kind of the amount of discussion that these things uh, generate from, from everyone in the company, um, our PM can kind of take these things and be like, oh, you know, we should work on this right now, or maybe a developer will just pick them up and make them happen, um, and so that's, that's really great too. Um, and that's kind of how you socialize product improvements, right? You kind of have everyone on the same page. You kind of, uh, you know, everyone knows what needs doing. Everyone knows, you know, given the universe of things we could possibly do, everyone kind of knows that for a given idea, like here, you know, it's more important or less important, and also can give feedback on, you know, kind of the ideas and their ranking. Um, and we found this to be really successful. And I think that, uh, you know, everyone at the company kind of has a really good idea of, of what's going on with the product, um, which is really great. So everyone does design, but, you know, I kind of want to caveat this, right? Um, you know, the more cynical among you may have kind of identified like, oh, that's designed by committee, like this, you know, whole everyone does design love-in that I've been describing. Um, and I think that, that one thing we've done is we've kind of identified the right places in the design process where everyone can really help. Um, so design kind of has two, two phases, right? There's like the expanding phase where you start out with this like, kind of like kernel of an idea, um, and then you generate, you know, all the possible directions it can go, right? You come up with 700 ideas, you know, this is like the brainstorming phase, and obviously everyone's input is, is super valuable in that phase. Um, but then you kind of turn the corner and you say, okay, we've you know, enumerated all the ideas, and now we want to like, bring it back a little bit. Um, and that's kind of the contracting phase of design. And, and everyone's input is actually really valuable in the beginning of that phase as well. Because um, you know, everyone has a different perspective, and everyone realizes, like, okay, um, you know, given these 700 ideas that we've generated, here are the good ones, here are the bad ones, here are the ones that would work, you know, given what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, but then there comes a point in that, in that process where you really want to kind of just kick everyone else out, and you need to kind of end the contracting phases. You're really zeroing in on the actual design. You need to end that with you know, two, maybe three, like really great product people in a room. Because um, otherwise you get you know, 25 people at a design review and people are like, oh, well, you know, I think it should be pink instead of blue. And like, what if we did it this other way, right? And that just, you know, you'll, you'll literally never ship anything and the designs you'll end up with are, are really terrible. Um, so I guess avoid design by committee um, wh whilst involving everyone. And that's, that's a hard balance to strike, but I think we've, uh, I think we've done that pretty well. Um, so that's our kind of internal uh, Asana design process, but we're also not super insular. Um, we really do value our relationship with our users, um, and we think we have a great relationship with our users. Um, every once in a while we'll see this. Dear Asana, can you be my new boyfriend? I'm actually in love with you. Um, and so this is great, right? And so if we're ever like, having a bad day at work, we can actually just go and read our Twitter stream um, and, and see stuff like this, and it's, it's really fantastic. And we, we kind of keep communicating with our users in, in a few different ways. Um, so one thing we use is this thing called uh, NPS, and it's a one-question survey that we just pop up in our product every six months um, for every user, and we just say, you know, how likely are you to recommend Asana to a friend uh, on a scale of one to ten? And you can get some numbers and do some math, and uh, you know that's that's really fun. Um, but it, we actually make it into a two-question survey, and the second part is just tell us anything you know you want you want to say, right? We just as soon as they they give us the number, and then we kind of uh, you know just give them an open text field and say, you know, what do you love about the product? What do you dislike about the product? Um, you know, and so then we can kind of get you know, all these different answers and we can correlate them with like, all right, well, people who you know, gave us 10s have these things to say, you know, they'd really like to see more of X. 
Um, and people who gave us fives are really complaining about you know, this feature that we actually already have, and so we should you know, just surface that more, or something like that. Um, and so there's this whole kind of product development science about like, you know, which people on the scale you actually want to please if you want to bring the fives up to you know, sixes and sevens, or if you really want to keep the tens at tens. Um, you know, those are kind of all uh, decisions you can make using this data. Um, another thing I really think we've gotten right is that our product support team and the design team have a really amazing relationship. And uh, so you know, the product support team are the people who are you know, curating, curating our external documentation and the people who are uh, you know, answering help tickets from all of our users that come in. And so these really are the people on the front lines uh, talking most directly to the users. Um, and so we released a, a feature a while ago, and it got kind of not a great response from our user, users. Uh, and I was literally just able to get up from my desk and walk over there and be like, hey, guys, you know, give me some color on what happened here. Like, what, you know, what were people really saying like, in, when you got emails uh, you know, decrying this feature? Like, what words were they using? Um, you know, which parts of the feature do they really not like? And then we could kind of use that information to um, you know, make a decision about where we wanted to go next with that feature. Um, they also send us emails every week that kind of just break down by, uh, by frequency what people are asking about. Um, and so this, makes us, this lets us be able to kind of identify the top ones and then phrase internal goals in terms of like, okay, well, you know, we've been getting a lot of uh, requests about photos. And so like, what we're going, you know, the goal is going to be we want to eradicate that as the top request you know, over the next month. Um, and so basically, you know, the, the goal just becomes like whatever, whatever is making users write in uh, to ask about this feature, we want to, you know, we want to solve that for them. We want to resolve this issue that they're having. Um, and I just think that's a really healthy user-centric way to kind of phrase the goals in the company. Um, and I think it's, it's served us really well. Um, so another thing we do is we just kind of have this very, uh, you know, very standard guerrilla user testing uh, framework. And we use this product called Ethneo uh, to just recruit people like right off our website. You come to our website to sign up for our product. Um, and then you know, you can, you know, we offer you a $80 Amazon gift card to, uh, to let us watch you use the product. Um, and then we can literally call people as they're signing up and just be like, hey, you know, I want to get you, like, I want to watch your first experience with our product. And I don't know how familiar you guys, you guys are with user testing, but this is, it's, it's just a really incredible way to get people with, uh, you know, with kind of other perspectives and other assumptions that you, uh, you, know, you may not hold and see kind of like how they use the product. So, you know, obviously around the office, we have this whole set of best practices and this whole set of, you know, kind of knowledge about our product um, that we've built up over the years. Um, and, you know, kind of when you get into user testing, you're able to see like, oh, you know, here's an entire group of people that doesn't have those assumptions and kind of how, you know, how are they using the product? And so that's always really valuable as well. Um, and so, you know, kind of all these things add up into this, this whole feedback loop that you have with your users, right? So, you know, you can kind of sit around and, and talk with the, the very smart people that you work with and, you know, kind of do design that way. And that's obviously very valuable. Um, but it really only gets you so far. And, you know, eventually, um, you know, kind of people, the people that you work with kind of have the same opinions that they did last week and, you know, kind of want the same pet features that they did last week and all these things. And you really need to kind of like break out of that and, and put stuff out in front of users and, uh, you know, kind of see, see, see what sticks. Um, and then when you get tweets like this, I think I'm going to name my firstborn daughter Asana, um, you kind of know that you're, you're doing a pretty okay job. Um, so just to kind of review, everything is design, right? Design is both the product planning and the actual, you know, figuring out what the product will be, both product and pixels. Um, and since it's everything, everyone should participate. Um, but you also need to kind of make sure that people participate in, in the place that their most, you know, their feedback can be most useful. Um, and that you don't kind of get hung up on anything. Um, and then finally, you know, establish a feedback loop, right? If everyone participates in design, that includes your users, and you can kind of go and, uh, you know, go and talk to them and kind of see, see what's working out. Um, so I want to switch gears for a second and, and actually tell you a story of a product that we, that we developed. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, Asana Mobile. This is fun. This has been uh, one of my favorite projects to work on. Um, and so last summer, we kind of decided, like, okay, well, you know, a lot of people have been asking about a mobile app. When is Asana going to get a mobile app? And uh, we thought this was a great idea because you know, we had this great, you know, this really exciting um, desktop task list. And we thought, well, the best task list is the one that you have with you all the time. So if you, you know, get out of the shower and have this great idea, um, you know, we want your phone to be right there and we want you to put that great idea into Asana. Um, you know, if you're stuck on the train or stuck in traffic or something and want to kind of catch up with all your coworkers, you know, you're able to kind of uh, you know, do that as well. And uh, you know, so, so we're really into that. But uh, with mobile, you kind of have a lot of options. Um, you know, with mobile, you've got the iPhone and the Android and BlackBerry and Winmo, and you can write a native app, or you can, you know, choose the mobile web route, or, you know, you can use one of these multi-platform frameworks. Um, you can do kind of all this stuff. And, uh, you know, we kind of needed to decide which one we wanted to choose. And uh, we kind of all agreed. We were like, okay, well, the best experience for our users would be to, 
um, you know, to kind of make a native app for every platform. Like that'd be great. Um, you know, we could have you know have really slick UI. Um, you know, use these great animations and these great you know um, performance libraries and things like that. Um, but there are always trade-offs. Always trade-offs. And so we ended up uh, actually going the mobile web route. And and here's why. Um, so a great e great experience would be a slick native UI, right? Like the users would have a great experience um, with such a UI, and we really wanted to be able to give that to them. Um, but another thing that makes for a great experience is shipping, right? So, um, you know, I can give you a product tomorrow that, uh, you know, is maybe like a little bit, um, you know, a little bit rough around the edges, or I can tell you like just, you know, use your imagination for the next mo nine months while I like make you a real product, right? And uh, at Asana, we have a strong bias towards shipping immediately. And so we kind of wanted to uh, be able to, to get something uh, out as fast as possible, and we're good at making web apps. I think the other thing is that uh, we really value constant improvement. We're constantly developing new features, um, constantly releasing new code, uh, and we really wanted to be able to, to get our developers to, you know, when you're writing a feature for the desktop, also write the same feature for mobile. Um, and we don't have to, uh, you know, kind of split the code base or anything like that. Um, and we really, we really thought that it would accelerate us to, to be able to you know, kind of work off the same code base, work off of the JavaScript framework that we've you know, invested tons of, stuff, tons of time in. Um, but the problem is the, the, the bottom two things were, were kind of directly uh, opposed to the, to the kind of slick native UI. And so we kind of looked at the options and we were like, all right, well, there may be this experience gap between mobile web and a native app, uh, but we don't really know exactly what that experience gap will be. Um, and HTML5 is pretty cool. So maybe we can kind of make something work, right? I, I'm a big believer in kind of uh, making cool-looking apps with, with HTML5, so we, we kind of went that way. Um, so as far as the design, um, here were the first, uh, the first wireframes I ever made for Asana Mobile. And you'll kind of notice that like, you know, they're very, they're very iPhone-looking. Um, and you know, we kind of have the, the little back button in the corner and like, all the you know, UI elements otherwise look like the iPhone. Um, and the reason is you know, I use an iPhone, and the iPhone is, I guess, generates the most mobile web traffic out there. Um, and also has this really, really strong design language. And uh, so it's, it's really easy to just come up with like, a plausible iPhone app in like, an afternoon, just using, um, you know, using kind of like the standard, the standard UI um, and the standard design elements. And so that's kind of you know, where I started out. Um, but the problem is uh, the iPhone UI elements are kind of designed to be uh, full screen elements. And uh, we were actually going to be running in the, in the uh, mobile browser. So what you kind of get then is that you get like you know you get all these toolbars right you've got these two different back buttons the browser back button and the uh, iPhone back button and you know you have the, you end up having like this very small amount of space on the screen for user content. Um, also, there's kind of this weird uncanny valley between the way that uh, you know when you fake all of the the iPhone native elements in HTML5, um, they mostly work and they you know it's pretty cool you can do like cool animations and, and gradients and stuff like that, um, but you know there's still kind of like ways in which they're not quite consistent and we were worried about that. And we also had no idea if, you know, if we release an iPhone-looking UI on Android, you know, how will people take that? Um, so those were kind of some good reasons that we thought, well, maybe we don't really want to do uh, an iPhone-looking iPhone, iPhone -looking UI. Um, there were also some terrible reasons as well, um, among them being that this was my first design project at Asana. And what I really wanted was like, to get into the design and like, to you know, come up with something really cool and like, come up with something unique. And I was basically like, I'm not just going to do a standard you know, iPhone, iPhone design. Like, I'm going to do something cooler. Um, and that was terrible. That's, it's a terrible idea to pick a design direction. Um, pure designer ego. Um, and I'm only glad that I have uh, you know, the sense of humor to joke about it now. Um, so eventually, the wireframes kind of started looking like this. And this is you know, totally different. You've kind of got this left gutter. You know, we've got a totally different navigation style. Um, and this is pretty much what we ended up uh, releasing with. So you can kind of see that the, uh, the metaphor here is that we've got like, these white cards with the, uh, you know, with the user's content on them. And you, know, you click on the cards, and then you know, this new card with details slides in, and you can kind of like, click back to the original card to like, get back. And then if you kind of click on the gutter here, um, you know, the card slides away, and you can see like, some different content. Um, so, you know, so it's pretty cool. It also happens to look exactly like our web app. Um, so if you kind of like one, you'll feel right at home on the other. Uh, the problem is it also wastes a lot of space, and people had never seen this on, on a phone before. And they were just like, I don't really understand what's going on here. You know, it's kind of cool. Um, you know, it'd be really cool if you could kind of you know, swipe between these cards, but we you know, didn't really ever end up uh, implementing that. And so we got pretty excited about this, and we were like, all right, this is a great you know, first shot. Um, and we put this out there. And the problem is, like, not a lot of people used it. Um, and so it was kind of, you know, and we started getting some feedback that was like, oh, well, you know, nice effort on the mobile web app guys, but I really wanted you to come out with a native app. And so we said, all right, well, you know, we still have all these great reasons why we didn't want to do a native app, but you know, kind of what can we give people? 
And so what we ended up doing was writing this very thin wrapper around our uh, web app that was basically just a full screen browser. Um, and we said, OK, well, it's going to be in the App Store. It's going to be a native app. You, know, you can kind of see it on your home screen. So we're going to go from kind of like you know, typing in a URL to getting a website to you know, being on the home screen and getting a full screen app. And we thought, OK, uh, you know, maybe this is what people want. This took us like a week. Um, so it seemed like a really high leverage thing. And then we thought, we'll be in the App Store. People will be able to find us. Um, this is going to be great. And uh, one thing that happened in the App Store is we started getting reviews. And uh, a lot of people were like, you can't fool me. This is not a native app at all. You know, this is just a UI web view around your website. And we were like, well, yeah. Um, but the other thing that happened is that, that a lot of people phrase their reviews like, you know, well, the desktop app is the best thing ever, but this, you know, dot, dot, dot. And then they would use words like, uh, you know, abysmal or like, you know, a disgrace. Um, so so we, didn't, we didn't quite hit it out of the park there. Um, and so we, we kind of dug in a little bit more to, to what people were saying there. And you know, people, wanted to, people wanted us to add features. And so when we had originally done, um, when we originally done the mobile app, we said, OK, people are going to mostly want to like, add new tasks you know, on the go and also just kind of look at what's going on. And people were like, no, what I really want is to be able to like, edit all of my data. Like, I really want a full Asana experience on mobile. Um, and we said, OK. Uh, oh, there, there we go. We had three stars. Um, so we kind of had taken, have taken these two shots, uh, you know, two, two swings of the bat, right? We had, uh, in October, we, we launched the mobile website. Uh, in December, we launched it in the App Store. And then we said, OK, we're going to do a third one. We're going to do some features. Um, and, and granted, this is really only like four months. I'm um, making this sound like a much, much longer or ordeal than it actually was. Um, so, and this was one of those times where, you know, we'd gotten a lot of requests for features, and everyone wanted mobile features. And so we were like, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate features as the top mobile features is the top requested thing. Uh, that was our goal. And we did awesome at it, right? M the mobile feature request pretty much just went away, um, or at least stopped being you know, kind of a major factor. And what that allowed us to do was that allowed us to kind of uh, zoom in on, on something else that had been happening for a while that we hadn't been able to really uh, interpret very well. And that was people, again, asking for like, a native app. They were like, no, guys. Really, I wanted a native experience. And before that, it kind of been mis mixed in with some feature requests. and. Uh, you know, we weren't kind of sure exactly how important that was or how much people, you know, really wanted features. Because, like, a native experience is kind of a hard thing to nail down. Um, but now it was, it was kind of loud and clear that's what people wanted. Um, so we kind of started to dig into that a little bit. And we, we uh, sent out a survey to a whole bunch of our users and said, okay, you know, you, we heard you. You said you want more from our mobile app. What more do you really want? Um, and they came back. And, a lot, and most, of, most of the responses kind of did fit into this, like, you know, native experience bucket. Um, but that means a whole bunch of different things to different people. So one thing a native experience is, is it's much faster. Um, you know, for various technical reasons, uh, you know, our JavaScript code ran slower on the phone. Um, and you know, it had to download itself from, you know, from the internet uh, when every time you started up the app. And so that kind of sucked. Um, another thing that a native experience does is it actually looks native. So we talked a little bit about the design language before. Um, and it turned out that people really wanted that. Right? There was a lot of stuff that they saw in the App Store, and they were like, your, your thing doesn't look anything like this. Like, what, what's up? Um, and so we thought, OK, you know, people, like, we didn't hear this before, but now we understand people really want that. Let's give it to them. Um, and then the third thing is that uh, it's, it's currently impossible to use Asana uh, you know, if you're like, on a plane or you know, in San Francisco or any other place that you don't have cell phone signal. Um, and so you know, one thing that people really, really wanted was to be able to use it offline. And we thought, OK, we're going to have to do that too. Um, and it turns out that's really hard, so that's coming a little bit later. But uh, these first two. We actually just uh, finished um, you know, kind of this big project. And so we kind of went back and we said, OK, well, we want all these things. right? We want all these things that, that can be afforded you know, by a native experience. But we also still have all these you know, good reasons not to do a native experience that we came up with six months ago. Right? And they're all still totally true. And we're not willing to budge from those. Um, and so what we did is we're, we just sat down and we're like, all right, well, we're good developers. We'll just you know, make shit faster. Um, you know, that's not hard. So we totally you know, just revamped the way that you know, we, we do code, and we optimized it. Uh, I don't actually know many of the details about this. Um, but you know, we changed the way that it loads on the phone. And we got our, our speed down from something like 15 to 20 seconds to like three seconds. Um, and that's kind of a big deal. And I think that's you know, definitely on par with, with many of the native experiences you actually see on the phone. Um, you know, if you get out of the shower and you're waiting 15 seconds to, you know, for Asana to load, that sucks. Um, but three seconds we can handle. And so then as far as the visual design, um, one thing that is, it's kind of interesting to note is, so here are our competitors. Um, and so if you search for you know, like task management or something in the App Store, um, you get stuff that looks like this. And you know, it's really nice looking, right? They've got colors and shapes, and they've got this like, 
you know, nice wood grain, and it just looks really beautiful. And you look at this and you're like, wow, someone put a lot of care into this product. This is a great product. This, you know, this, this just speaks to me really well, and I want this. Um, but the problem is, you know, we're, we're not really convinced that these designs are better for getting real work done, right? And Asana is, is all about getting real work done. And so, you know, for example, like, you know, you've got this really nice wood grain, and you have, like, you know, the name of the task, and then, like, a little strip of wood grain, and then, like, another task, and then another little strip of wood grain, right? And, uh, you know, we, we've kind of taken a stand against that, and we've said, like, no, we're, we, we don't want that at all, right? That's less readable. It devotes way less space to actual user content, um, and we, we kind of can't do that. Um, but we really did want to come up with a, a very emotionally pleasing design. Um, so we tried stuff like this, and it's got, you know, colors, and it's got, you know, shapes, and, uh, you know, nice textures and things like that. And we looked at this and we realized, like, no, this, this really isn't us, right? Like, you know, for one thing, there's, there's a lot of border around um, all the places where people are supposed to, uh, you know, put in, put in data. Um, we were really uncomfortable with that, and we thought, you know, no, we, we really can't release an app like this. Like, this is just not, this is not what we're going to do. Um, and so then we went back to the drawing board, and we said, okay, well, you know, what can we do that kind of balances that, like, you know, putting people's data out in front of them versus, uh, you know, actually looking really nice. Um, and this is kind of what we came up with. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this. And this is kind of the redesign that we're going to, going to release uh, you know, in the semi-near future. And uh, my favorite thing about this whole, this whole thing is that if you don't actually like this design, um, I don't really care, because we're just getting started. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm serious about that, right? Like, design is this whole, this whole big, long process. And I'm, you know, I'm in no more of a position to say that like, this is the perfect mobile design than I was you know, when I first started out and you know, came up with a kind of mobile web design. And so, you know, We've kind of, we went through this whole process, you know, and, and May, you'll recall, is really only like six or seven months from when we first uh, you know, put, released our mobile app. And so it's really been like a pretty short amount of time to do four major iterations in. Um, and I'm really, you know, I'm really pleased with the work that we've done. Um, and I think, again, you know, every time we release stuff, we've gotten like a whole new set of, of feedback and comments and you know, realizations that stuff we thought was important wasn't important at all, and realizations that, you know, oh, you know, the stuff we did think was important is in fact much more important than we thought. Um, and so I'm, I'm just really excited to kind of like put this out there. Um, you know, this is the most major change that we've, we've had. Put it out there and just kind of see what people think. And uh, we kind of hit this cool point uh, about you know, six months ago maybe um, with our desktop app where we had just finished a major redesign of that. Um, and we had this really cool guy say, also Asana is awesome now. <laughs> and so I think the goal is to someday you know, have people say that about Asana Mobile. Um, and hopefully this is it. But if it's not, we'll keep going. We'll get there. So thank you guys.